Hi, I'm Gina Arenas, Program Manager on the Office Extensibility team. In this video, I will give an overview of the Microsoft Graph and the features that we are announcing as generally available, ready for you to start integrating in your production applications. In the next eight minutes, you will learn. One, what is the Microsoft Graph API and what benefits it brings to you as you develop applications that integrate with Office 365 and other services from the Microsoft Cloud? Two, what functionality is available as part of the Microsoft Graph API v1.0 endpoint? Three, you will see a demo and get pointers to when you can go and learn more about the Microsoft Graph, get code samples, and start taking advantage of it in your own applications. At the end, I will leave you with a quick showcase of one of our partners who is already taking advantage of the API. The Microsoft Graph offers the developers a unified API endpoint for accessing data and intelligence and insights coming from the Microsoft Cloud. In other words, it exposes intelligent insights that Microsoft builds in the Cloud by bringing together smart machine learning algorithms with a wealth of data and user behavior, all of it under a single API endpoint. The Microsoft Graph was introduced earlier this year under the preview name Office 365 Unified API. Today, the Office 365 Unified API is getting a new name, Microsoft Graph. Here's what's generally available today under the Microsoft Graph and ready for production use. Office 365 APIs, files coming from OneDrive for Business, mail, calendar, contacts from Outlook, unified groups, and APIs from Azure Active Directory, like applications, users, groups, and other directory objects. Imagine the possibilities available to you when you can access all of the user's profile information that is stored across Azure Active Directory, SharePoint, and Exchange, all aggregated under a single request. When you can access information that belongs to that user, like messages, calendar, conversations from Outlook, and files from OneDrive for Business when you can traverse fixed relationships within the data, like navigating to the manager, to the group membership, or the profile of the last person who modified a particular file. For unified groups, which are the ones that users can access from the Outlook experience, you can use the API not only to manage the group, but also access the group's conversations, calendars, and files. The Microsoft Graph makes all of this information available for applications and accessible through a single API endpoint hosted under graph.microsoft.com, all based on open standards, OAuth 2.0, REST, and JSON. The Microsoft Graph is now leaving the previous stage and making two versions available. A generally available endpoint, version 1.0, which is ready for you to start using in your production apps. And a refresh of the preview endpoint, slash beta, in which you can experiment the latest features that we are introducing into the Microsoft Graph that are not yet ready for production level use. This video focuses on the functionality that is under the new versioned endpoint of Microsoft Graph, that is v1.0. In a subsequent video, I will cover functionality under the preview endpoint, that is slash beta. Now, let's dig into what is available in the v1.0 endpoint. First, let's focus on the data that can be accessed you will notice the Microsoft Graph centers on users and groups. Let's look at the Microsoft Graph in action. To do this, I'm going to transition to this web application called API Explorer that allows me to make requests to the API and displays back the results of the query. Here, I'm already signed in into the application using my demo user, Sara. In this text box, I see the endpoint in which the API is hosted and the version of the API. I can get to all of Sara's information by navigating to the slash me endpoint. I can use path navigations to get to related objects like photo or use OData query parameters to select specific properties. I can query for Sarah's manager and her direct reports. In a similar fashion, I can navigate to all of the user's information underneath the tenant with the slash users collection and use operations like filter to, for example, get only users in the finance department. From the me shortcut, I can go to the messages entity set and get back the collection of mail messages in Sarah's inbox. I can limit the number of results by using the top parameter. For messages in particular, I can use dollar $search to search the collection for a specific keyword or user. 
I can also access Sarah's personal contacts with slash contacts. I can then navigate to the drive in OneDrive for Business. Notice I'm going from the user who's stored in Azure Active Directory to the content that is stored in the individual services. In this case, the content that is stored in OneDrive for Business. I can go to the specific documents by going to the navigation slash drive slash root slash children. And navigate to the specific file using the name of the file. Using navigations, I can go directly to the user that last modified this particular file and get all of his user profile information. Now in this case, I went from a property of a file in OneDrive to the user profile in the directory. I can navigate to the groups collection. Here, I will get a list of all the groups that are part of the organization. Once I get a group, I can navigate to the list of members. And as I mentioned, unified groups have content related to them that I can access using the API. So I can go to slash conversations and get access to the conversations that belong to that group. In a similar fashion, I could go to a slash events or slash drive and get access to the calendar and the files that belong to this group. Now let's go back to more information of what is available in the Microsoft Graph. The Microsoft Graph API v1.0 endpoint covers our commercial and consumer offerings. However, the authorization platform that supports both consumer and commercial accounts and their converged experience is still under preview. Therefore, if you're building production level apps, you should focus on using Microsoft Graph API v1.0 to access commercial Office 365 enterprise accounts. The Microsoft Graph supports Auth 2.0 flows for authorization and authentication, exposing the same level of permissions that the individual service APIs expose allowing applications to call the API on behalf of our user using a delegated flow, or as a service level app using an application flow. You can use query options like $Select, $Filter, $OrderBy, and others to manipulate the data set that is returned by the API. The API supports service level actions and functions like send mail, create reply, accept or decline events, copy or move files. The service is OData compliant for clients that understand OData before. In the demo, you saw several GET requests, but doing CRUD operations is part of the functionality, as it is course for supporting single page applications. Taking advantage of the Microsoft Graph in your applications is easy. If you have previously developed against Office 365, it is no different. Since this is a REST endpoint, you can code in your platform of choice. We have now a set of preview SDKs available in .NET, iOS, and Android, as well as sample code in GitHub for multiple platforms. I am sure that by now you're really excited about all of the opportunities and simplicity of integrating with Microsoft Graph to access the vast amount of data from the Microsoft Cloud. So go to your favorite browser and navigate to graph.microsoft.com. You will be taken to the API documentation, links, getting started experience, the API Explorer, code samples, libraries, and more. If you have any questions, ask us in Stack Overflow, tagging your questions with Microsoft Graph and Office 365. Let us know about the cool apps you're building by posting in Twitter which has, with hashtag Microsoft Graph and hashtag Office Dev. Now, I wanna take a little bit of a minute to showcase one of our partners who recently built their app taking advantage of the Microsoft Graph. Thank you for watching this session and happy coding. Welcome to this technical insight video illustrating how Office at Work web add-ins are using the Microsoft Graph. This sample letter has the document wizard add-in already loaded, and we are logged in as Dana Fox. Basically, this add-in allows the user to select data to be applied to the document, using the latest edition of new Word APIs. Now to the Microsoft Graph. Clicking into the recipient field, calls a REST endpoint in the graph, which returns my top 10 contacts. As you can see here in the console, we use the slash me slash contacts endpoint with a top 10 filter. In the response message, we can now examine the data returned for those 10 contacts. When the user selects a contact, that data will be applied to the document. When clicking into the signature field, the same happens as before, except that we call the slash myorganization slash users endpoint. 
This time, we will search for a specific user. The API call now includes our search criteria. Let's look at the returned object and its data. The criteria entered matches the display name field in the returned data object. Once again, selecting the record will apply the data to the document. Finally, let's have a quick look at the designer add-in, the add-in that lets you define the interaction between data and document. On the Data Connections page, we can view, edit, and create connections. Here's where you choose the source for your connection. You could choose between various Microsoft Graph sources, like Users, Calendar, and Contacts. As you saw earlier, the implementation of these endpoints is coherent, making them super easy to implement. We hope you like this quick insight on how we're using the Microsoft Graph. Thank you for watching.